This is All Sides from WOSU News. I am your host, Mike Thompson. It is Tech Tuesday. Intel, Google, Amazon, Meta, they all have a foothold in central Ohio, and they are scrambling to fill current and future positions. Industry experts agree that developing a talent pipeline starts with engaging younger and more diverse students. A national nonprofit headquartered in Columbus, TechCore, has been working for years to do that. It brings computer science learning to traditionally underrepresented young people in grades K through 12, black students, Hispanic students, girls, kids from rural areas. That's our subject for this segment of Tech Tuesday. Joining us is TechCore National Executive Director, Lisa Chambers. Welcome, Lisa, welcome back. Good to be here. It's great to see you. Um, Give us an idea of what the current marketplace is right now. What is the demand you're trying to meet? And what is the size of the pool that you have that you're developing to meet that demand? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, um, here in Central Ohio, we have more and more uh, tech companies that are um, moving into this space. We also have, you know, a number of institutions that have very large tech uh, uh, departments and so need, need that talent. But what we know, Mike, is that building that technology pipeline really starts in elementary school, right? Um, that kids need early access, they need access that is continual. Um, but right now, in a lot of our schools, we just don't have the internal capacity to offer computer science in a way that's rigorous and connected to learning. So that's where organizations like TechCore can step in um, and provide programming and support uh, in communities where, where that access currently is, is not where it needs to be. So how does it work? You partner with the schools? So we partner with schools. We partner with other youth-serving nonprofit organizations. We, we partner with um, city rec departments, with churches, anywhere there are kids, and we can bring in technology, we can deliver tech core programs. So that looks like um, after school programs in, in school districts, but with, you know, Girl Scouts or um, Boys and Girls Clubs, libraries, um, and then also summer camps. And again, anywhere we can go, um, uh, we, will, we will go and we will take out tech core programs. What do these programs look like? For, let's start with how, how young do you start? We start with third graders. Okay, what's a third grader tech core program look like? Well, it varies, right? So, so I'll give you, for example, our techie camps. So we have camps around different topics. So programming, 3D printing, um, robotics. And so kids can come in and they can have no previous experience. And over the course of the week, we will introduce them to the tool that we'll be using. And then we move right into creation, right? So giving them an opportunity to build something that comes from their mind, their spirit. Um, and at the end of the week, they'll present whatever it is that they built to their parents um, and, and families. And uh, we wrap up that way. So, um, so again, it just, you know, it, Students, we have students in those programs that have previous experience, students who have never perhaps coded a day in their lives, um, but both will come through with rich experiences. So third graders, are they doing coding or are they? Oh, absolutely, really? absolutely. Um, so we're, we're super excited um, about just the work that we are doing at that elementary school level and our kiddos are ready for it, right? I mean, and I think a lot of times we think, especially in this country, that I think students or, or children have their first interaction with technology before their second birthday. So we'll often hear parents who say, oh, my kids are always on my phone or they're always playing with some gadget. That doesn't necessarily turn folks into uh, developers and yeah. designers, right? So what we know in this country is we're great users and consumers of technology, but where we need students is really in that active development and creation of those next technology tools, right? We don't need yet another generation of users. We need a generation of developers. You can eat good food, doesn't mean you can cook good food. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> you Absolutely. To, you have to teach the chefs how to, how to do their thing. Yes. We're talking with Lisa Chamber. She's the National Executive Director of TechCore. We're talking about how to deepen and how to diversify the tech labor pool here in Central Ohio and around the country. You have a 10, you operate in 10 states. How does Ohio compare to other states as far as the interest in the in the level of engagement you're having with folks oh mike that's not a fair question no 
I'm, I'm, we're so proud to to have TechCore headquartered here in, in Columbus. We had a head start because you started here probably first. Well, actually, TechCore started in Massachusetts, okay. and right. we've been in Ohio since um, about 1999. Okay. Um, and our founder came to Ohio and the work saw the work we were doing here and. And, and our board decided that we would take over the national charter. So we became the national headquarters in, in 2011. What I'm excited about for Ohio is some of the work that is happening now, um, especially at, at the state level around um, computer science. So this last year, um, the governor formed a, a group that really come together around how do, you, how do we make Ohio a leader in computer science um, and had some really smart passionate folks around the table having that conversation and made some recommendations, you know, and so, you know, we're not there yet, but we are on their way. I can say, you know, Mike, I've been doing this work long enough that I feel like um, the momentum is really growing, that people really are starting to understand that businesses are starting to understand that if they want to ensure that talent pipeline, they've got to be invested and involved in community and in raising that, especially in communities like Central Ohio. We hear a lot about Intel investing a lot of money in at Columbus State, at Ohio State. Is that too late? Should Intel be perhaps investing a little bit of money in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade computer education? Everyone should be investing in elementary school education. And, and I know that Intel has programs that they're doing in the K-12 space, and we look forward to um, finding opportunities to, to partner with them on, on those programs. So yes, everyone, we cannot, I, and, and I think that businesses understand that now, that they can't just look to Columbus State and Ohio State for filling those talent pipelines. Um, because right now, our colleges and universities are not turning out enough computer science majors to fill the anticipated job growth. So what does that mean? That means we have to start earlier in ensuring that kids are having these experiences so that they even understand the opportunities that are, are before them. We've been talking about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math for well over 10 years. Is that not working or what, we, what we've been doing with STEM to, to fill these jobs? Well, I won't say that it's not working. I, I think that it is, you know, and I, and I'm, I want to say with TechCore, we really focus on the T yeah. in STEM, right? Yeah. We, we try to stay in our lane. Um, and one of the challenges that we're having with getting computer science into our schools is we just don't have the teachers who have the capacity to bring computer science in. So, you know, uh, I think maybe around 50% of high schools in the state of Ohio offer computer science, that's, that's not where we need to be, yeah. right? And, and I think it's not for a lack of interest, um, it's just that we don't have the talent. So we've got to think about what are we doing in our schools to power up our teachers, to give them the support that they need um, to, to bring computer science in. And again, that's at the high school level. We have to drill down and think about what does computer science in an elementary school look like versus what does it look like in a high school? Should it be like the you know, weekly art class, weekly music class, phys ed? Should it be one of these classes that kids go to every single week or maybe even twice a week? Well, if you're asking me, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right? I do think that the way that we, uh, but I, and again, I also sympathize with the demands that we're already placing on our schools and our teachers. So we have to be thoughtful and we have to make the investments that allow our schools to do that, right? So it's both professional teachers and also the infrastructure, mm -hmm. having the tools. To and, I, and, and I would say too, I think again, what we do in the meantime is this is where organizations like TechCore can come into play because while a school, you know, you may have a, a principal who says, oh my gosh, I'd love to have, you know, a computer science class in, in my building. I just don't have a teacher that's prepared to teach it. What we can do is we can bring a tech core program yeah. right into their after school, or we can think about how do we bring kids out of that into, into programs. And so that's where kind of these partners that, that work in these informal spaces can have just as much impact. So it's, it's, let's, let's kind of this dual path. The tech industry obviously and traditionally has been white and has been male. You're working to diversify that. What, what tools are you trying to do to make sure that folks who had 
who have been in marginalized communities, underserved communities, uh, get a chance to take these classes and enter this field? Great question. Thanks for asking it. Um, so one of the things that we're doing is, you know, the research shows that the real kind of first leak in our technology pipeline happens in fourth grade, right? That that's where girls and students of color really start to turn away. And, and why is that? Because that's a time in a child's development where they're starting to make decisions about who they are, who they see themselves as. What have I heard? What have I experienced? You know, so so if you're asking an elementary school student, you know, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? You'll hear common things, right? I want to be a firefighter, I'm a police mm -hmm. officer, doctor, or nurse, because those are things that they know and understand. I want to be a data analyst. Well, probably they might be the response if their parent, you know, one yeah. of their parents, right? Yeah. Um, so, so for us, we really want to focus in on those lower grade levels, on really building diverse groups of students coming into tech core programs at that at those younger ages. The other thing, Mike, that we're doing is we want to make sure that we're building um, programs and experiences where kids feel safe and seen and supported. And so for us, that also means the staff that we're hiring that are working um, with our students. So we, we hire lots of computer science and engineering undergrads to join the core, and then they go out and they implement tech core programs in the community. We're working to make sure that that group um, of young folks that we're sending into those classrooms look like yes. those kids, have had experiences like those kids. Yes. Um, see a young girl, sees a young woman. Absolutely. Teaching thriving in this injury, a person of color thriving in this injury could inspire a younger person to Absolutely. say, I can do that. Absolutely. And I think here in, in the Central Ohio community, and we also have this up in Northeast Ohio, that we've been in those, those um, communities long enough that we have had kids who were in tech core programs while they were in high school or middle school. They are now attending um, universities and they're coming back to work for tech Right. So they can say, hey, I did, you know, techie camp when I was in eighth grade and I went to this school that you're in, you know. And again, I think just those connections for our kids um, are extremely powerful. Speaking of uh, things that are special to get kids involved in November, your, ho your group hosts the annual uh, 12 hour hackathon. It's open to 200 students, four sites around Ohio, including Columbus. For the Columbus event, there's a requirement that students be a person of color. And during the event, students learn how to create an app and to build it. This is a, a great event. They really, it's 12 hours. It's, it's, a, it's a marathon and they work quickly. Oh, it's a marathon and it's so exciting. <laughs> it's so exciting, this event. Um, and, and as you mentioned, this is our biggest year ever with the hackathon. So, you know, Columbus, Dayton, Elyria, Akron, but Columbus will be our largest um, location. So 100 students, we are focusing on students of color. Mm -hmm. With this program, we're really um, wanting to make sure that Black and Hispanic students have an opportunity to have this, this experience. And part of that was driven by our sponsors of this, this, of this event, you know, and just understanding the need for greater diversity. Um, and, and when you think about the fact that the Hispanic workforce overall is 17%. But when you drill that down to the tech industry, the representation is only eight, right? Yeah. So we have work to do. And this is, you know, I often think is this is, this is about bringing those um, diverse mindsets and experiences to the work that we're doing, right? That companies are gonna create better products. They're gonna have greater outcomes when they have a greater diversity in, in their workforce. And you see that like facial recognition software has a bias against people of color. They do very well when it comes to white people facial recognition, but exactly. it just, you can see how a diverse workforce would say, hey, wait a minute, this ain't working for folks who look like me. Absolutely, and and that has been our experience on a number of, of creations. And, you know, some of the first um, audio uh, technology that was created didn't recognize female voices. Mm -hmm. There were no females around the table in that creation, you know, so it, it, it Again, I think when we think about just, just the impact here, and I often think about too, just the loss of those creative ideas that are coming up to play because we don't have um, that, that kind of diverse group around the table. Is there room in the Columbus Hackathon? Do you still have openings? Absolutely. So we how do, do. folks uh, get into, if they're interested, how do they apply? Sure, so they can uh, visit our website, which is techcore.org, T-E-C-H-C-O-R-P-S. Don't forget that S mm -hmm. at the end. 
um, dot org and they'll see the tech core hack they'll see links there um, we also are recruiting volunteers so with the hackathon students um, can sign up on their own they don't have to have any previous experience um, we will place them on teams we build really diverse teams so we mix the kids up they're going to be working with kids from different schools different districts different ages, um, and abilities. Different ages. absolutely we really build these 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 um, mixed teams and then they are supported throughout the day by a tech mentor. So this is where um, companies can get involved in this event and, and sign up to volunteer. And that mentor doesn't do anything on the technical side or the creative side. They almost are like a project manager. Yeah. So just keeping the kids on, on task. But we're, we're so excited and, and grateful to, you know, the Franklin County Commissioners, the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, Norton Corporation, AT&T, SciTech, and also Willow Tree Apps for helping us to, to, to bring this, this program and this opportunity to kids. Lisa Chambers, National Executive Director of TechCore, trying to deepen and diversify our tech labor pool. Thanks for joining us here on All Sides. Thank you. When we come back, we'll talk about how hackers are playing a role in the current war in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. That's when All Sides Tech Tuesday continues on 89.7 NPR News. Thank you.